The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Rody. When you work in quality assurance, perfection comes easy. Tori Tuchilo. When Tori steps on the scene, you are his story. Eugene Henderson. In the game of life, I choose Jeopardy. Maria M. Where I come from, they sing God Save the Queen. The truth is, it's actually me. Becca Simon. If you can't stand the heat come to minnesota jill hirsch your petty drama can't take this warrior down jamie all some people call me cold but it's not me it's that minnesota weather sarah gibbs you may not like the cut of my jet but that's what you get from sarah gibbs richie d if you can't be cool you can't be with caduce megan shaw i may be a model but i'll never be a model minority samaj bledson the fun bus is here and i'm driving on the turn Mike. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. Danny McLaughlin. First, I came out, and now I'm coming for everything. Kelly Paper. I may be from down under, but don't ever underestimate me. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Sarah Watkins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mom means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist bumping, this mama brings the party. Jill Walsh. I made it up the hill myself and I'll kick any jack off. And finally, diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Did you watch anything else exciting this weekend? Uh, I watched I watched the slap heard around the world. <laughs> you were watching old Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> I so here's uh okay I'm going to uh, well okay we don't no, have we're to going go to the okay. point the let me put it let me. Put, Put the punchline up front, okay? Okay. The worst thing that happened that night Mm -hmm. was that Oscars suddenly became relevant again. The Oscars was trending again on Twitter. (laughs) That was the worst thing. That That award show was almost dead. And I'm just upset that now it's alive again. I know. That was the crime. The only crime that was committed was against me. (laughs) <laughs> personally because <laughs> i did not i wanted the oscars to die well, and i didn't what? even know they were on until i saw all the other flurry of activity online just before i went to bed and i was like oh damn it it's alive again <laughs> <laughs> well well let me just tell you there's a lot of white women out there who also feel personally attacked by the that's oscars true this week. <laughs> that's true but for very different reasons. Very different reasons. Yeah. Oh I don't my even God. Think I paid the number of white the women at just my workplace that had a, an opinion about oh this. Oh my God, me too. I was on a work call yesterday morning. By 10 a.m., I was on three conference calls, and three of those calls, they all started with like one guy was like, All right, let's just get to the punch. Speaking of punch, anybody watch the Oscars? I was like, Shut the fuck up. Ian, it's nine in the morning. Be quiet. I and know. Then there's this one person who was on three of those calls with me, and there was with different groups of people. But that one person went from calling it in the beginning, the first call when it was mentioned. First, she said Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Then the second call, she was like, Will Smith 
punched Chris Rock in the face. I'm like, that is not what happened. No. <laughs> but the third time she was like, he rushed at him on the stage. I was like, wow, just in three hours, you have changed what happened. What? It got progressively more aggressive. Yeah. I was like, none of those. What? <laughs> What? So. No, and I work it was in, like, just an open tech, tupper. So like... It was just an open tupper. And how many yeah. have I, ha, have you not received a tupper before? Okay, I have. Okay, it's it was one tight slap. But that's one what tight it was. slap is what he it gave, was. <laughs> he gave Chris Rock one tight slap. You want to uh, shit on Chris Rock while I shit on uh, Will Smith? We can do either. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's the thing. They were both. I, I think the reason why it was so shocking because it was clearly a personal thing mm. that should have been handled privately. But the the first strike was the fact that he chose to humiliate Jada Pinkett Smith again for the second again, time for the on second the same time, state. and again a woman of color, again a woman who ends up being his punchline because Chris is, has done this before, and other comedians do that all the time too. And other male comedians do that sometimes too. Women too, actually. So comedians tend to do that. But Chris especially has done this to Jada before. Yeah, and even one other thing that he said even that wasn't related to them was he called um, Penelope Cruz. He just called oh, her the, the wife. Javier, yeah, the wife. Yeah. Or Javier Bardem's wife. And yeah, it's like, his wife is gonna, yeah, his wife is going to be upset about it. Like, yeah, but her name is Penelope fucking Cruz. Like, we yeah. know who she is. So We just... knew her before we knew him, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was just a mess. It was a mess, but you know what is a bigger mess? is like listening to people, especially South Asian men, who famously, yeah, big tempers, okay, yeah. out here. It's hot. They got tempers. Okay? Yeah. They're coming in hot with like, <laughs> this is abhorrent reprehensible mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. his award and i'm like i have seen you beat the shit out of your kids at like yes. birthday parties these men with like massive anger management issues are out here being like oh how dare he do this and it's just yeah. like he doesn't first of all he doesn't owe you anything it's not the i, I heard one of my friends uh kim mm -hmm. our friend kim she was saying how one of her friends said something like it ruined her night oh, <laughs> ruined your night <laughs> It ruined my night too, but that was because I found out the Oscars were still on. <laughs> I was like, who watches the night? Oscars? What did you do? Did you pay a ticket to watch the Oscars? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> ruined your night. But also, this is the part where every, all the discourse online goes off kilter is when you start pretending that the Oscars is hallowed ground yeah. that you cannot tarnish. Because why? Because Harvey Weinstein and everybody else has walked through that. Like <laughs> what? Like yeah. is, are, they walked that path, so that's ha hallowed ground. How many predators and womanizers and uh, you know all kinds of criminals have you all celebrated in the past years? People are How like. Take his award back. Um, excuse me, Mel Gibson fucking is has yeah. been welcomed back into the industry with open right. fucking arms. Like, and he's a right raging anti semi and Just racist. as I was watching that, some of these clips is they're playing the Mel Gibson and you know, uh movie that he's coming out with. What's his name? Mikey Mike. What's his name? Marky Mike. Marky Mark. Marky Mark. Marky Mark. 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 Yes. I'm like blanking <laughs> on his name. I'm like he's in fear <laughs> the funky <laughs> bunch the funky bunch yes so he's doing a movie with my uh mel gibson as mel gibson with, as his father and they're playing that I'm like really you want to talk about that oscars is not hallowed ground oscars was a very toxic place for a long time for people of color yeah. native americans for, yep. And I mean, the in the in memoriam did not even acknowledge two of the biggest Bollywood stars that passed away this year, Dilip That's Kumar true. and Lata Mangeshkar. They yeah. have made more music and more movies than anybody else on the planet Earth, actually. And well, they weren't part of Hollywood. They were part of the film industry, and they have in the past 
they have true. acknowledged Bollywood stars when they pass, and th- that wasn't done anymore. They didn't acknowledge Bob Saget or Norm Bob McDonald. Saget did- yes, Norm Macdonald hosted true. the Oscars, right? Like, and they, they didn't, didn't do him. So- yeah, so the whole it's like, thing was a mess. So let's just say Oscars is a bunch of crap now. It's a <laughs> crappy, crappy place, and you know, you you go into the swamp, you will get the swamp creatures. That's what you get. But I'm like, that's not hallowed ground. So forget about you know, insulting Oscars and, you know, making uh, making a mockery of it. Who cares yeah. about it? Yeah. And this then isn't... this was a fight between two men who happened to be black and who happened to have a personal vendetta against each other. Yes. It had nothing to do. It's not a reflection of their culture. It is They don't have to be the examples for their whole entire community. It has yeah. nothing to do with any of that. The con- conversations online about... Uh, that kind of conversation just shows your race. Your response to that slap tells us more about you than it does about the two men who were participants of it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Where you land on the discourse is not what I, it's how you talk about the discourse is really what's important. Like it's so ridiculous. Yeah. It's Chris has, you know, went way below the belt. He was, it was off color. It was horrible. The fact that he made the joke after he had made the movie good hair and knows the significance of hair to a black woman just tells you that he didn't care. It's 2022. Okay. Making fun of people's appearance, making jokes or commenting on anyone's appearance, we should we all know not to mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. We don't say that stuff anymore. Right. We don't talk it about is, people's it appearance is, anymore. It is a it was a stupid joke for cheap laughs. Yeah. At the expense of Jada. Yeah. Jada should be mad. Will should be extremely mad. Um, but should Will get up, walk over and slap the shit out of Chris? No, that's not what you do. It's that's not what you do with, you know, comedians. <laughs> I have a feeling that if he didn't sit back down, if Will Smith didn't sit back down and like shout, I, I'm i so glad Juan Dixon isn't mm-hmm. here right now. Yeah. If he didn't say that, then I think that. People would I have thought it was a joke. People would have thought it was a joke and they wouldn't even thought about it. It is yeah. actually, in my opinion, it is the fact that he talked out of turn. It is the fact that he made a scene. Yes. That is the part that makes him mad because people are like, he could have done it privately. He could have done that at the No, no, he could party. have taken the mic and shouted what he shouted in the mic at on yeah. the stage without hitting him. The hitting part is what is obviously Absolutely. wrong. But there's a he lot could have people- done what Kanye did, grabbed the mic and spoken into it and would have been fine. That would have been. Uh, that would no, have been. I have a feeling the people would have still been mad. Oh about yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have said, still said that was bad form, and he would have still gone through this. But I'm saying, from my point of yes. view, yeah, you just don't. You don't put your hands on anyone, and you shouldn't be doing that to any stand-up comedian of any kind. I mean, yeah. that shouldn't happen. No, you shouldn't do it to any human at all. Any human at all. And the on top of it, what bothered me about on the Will Will side of things was how he went on afterwards when he won and making himself sound as the protector of the family and saying somehow connecting it to King Richard's <laughs> the movie and how he has been called upon to protect everybody and especially Jada and. And I was like, uh, if if Jada had gotten, I mean, no, the only person you protected was actually Chris, because if Jada had been on the stage instead of you, that wouldn't have been a sla- tight slap. But I don't think him putting himself into the protector was necessarily empowering to women. I mean, if it was something that Jada is upset about, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that is a little bit toxic to say that I need to protect my wife. That is the part that also made me feel like Iggy when he was doing that. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that you want to protect your wife. That's his prerogative. I think that he was clearly realizing the consequences of his actions and actually him crying on stage and saying what he said to me felt like he was saying it was almost like he knew what happened that night. That's it for his career. I don't think Will Smith was going on stage thinking to himself like, yeah, I'm going to be celebrated now. I think he was realizing how fucking embarrassing this whole situation was. But at the same time, it's like I I feel bad for the Williams sisters because like last award shows that that lady, that random white lady, that director, she said some shit to them. So I just feel bad for them that their like moment keeps like going away. But at the same time, like, you know what? 
Yeah, this isn't rocket science. This isn't like curing cancer. It's no. a fucking movie. Okay. It's yeah. the movie industry. These yeah. people don't owe us anything. And it should be a reminder. And everybody who's like so upset, like, how could Will Smith do this? This person doesn't owe you anything. You don't know them. And this should be a reminder to everybody not to carry these people like they're on a pedestal. They're human beings and they're going to do fucked up shit. Right. There are many times that good people do dumb shit and bad people occasionally do good stuff. And that doesn't yeah. like, you don't throw the baby with the bathwater. You don't go, I'm never going to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air again. Like, shut the fuck up. Yes, you are. Like, that's yeah. stupid. Don't say, oh, I'm never going to consume their content again. Or maybe they can. Maybe you can well, say that. Well, you that's, can. That's you can you decide to make. Well, but you don't have to watch it. You don't, you don't have to consume it. I don't want to talk to the show anymore. The, yeah, I don't sure. have to consume it. That's fine. You can have your own boundaries of what you think is acceptable, not, not acceptable. That's fine. I don't think that you can take what happened with these two men who happen to be black and then make it all about black men and this of course you know yeah of course. and that was that was the most egregious part of all of this was listening so even in my workplace I was in a zoom call and I with the and it was like all staff meeting so there are like 20 people on the staff and literally the seven black people on there did not turn the mic on and it was only the yep. white people talking yeah it was only the white people discussing this and laughing about it and they didn't even realize none of the black people were participating in it yep they just all had that look on their face when you have you have this terse smile on your face a fake smile and you just sit there staring at the screen and that's what all the black people were doing yeah and, and that's, that's what that's what i mean it's like don't take this and make it into use words like aggressive don't use words like violent it was nothing nobody's like Judd Apatow saying that oh he could have been killed what you would be killed by a slap Judd Apatow <laughs> really more how about weak Jared are Apatow you it does about anybody else he didn't even punch and this is a man who was Ali he yeah. didn't even throw a punch and I can see why men are so triggered by it because I think for a man there's nothing more humiliating, humiliating than getting than slapped by a man by like by a gentleman like that <laughs> I know <laughs> by by a person who doesn't even swear <laughs> By the fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> the whole thing is ridiculous, and I wish that I, I can't believe we even spent this much time talking. I know about it, what was more offensive was how Sierra went after Danielle. That okay. was more offensive. Let's just get to that because <laughs> okay, that let's was talk about that House was a here. real fight. Okay, people. Yeah, yeah. Summer House was a real fight. Okay, mm -hmm. all Will Smith did was give him one tight slap. Okay. It was fight. So Summer House is the morning after Lindsay's birthday and Paige is coming in hot with the slut shaming. Mm. <laughs> Lindsay's coming in hot with a lot of hot sex. <laughs> yes. She looks like she's having the best fucking birthday she had, ever. Yeah. She had Emphasis like... Emphasis on fucking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she had at least... They share at the nighttime and then the early morning too. A good the early morning. morning. Oh my god, she's like she was so impressed. She was about she was ready to get up, wear clothes, and drive him home. Yeah, instead of calling him an Uber. Yeah, she was his Uber. It was yeah. so good that she drove him home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Paige is just coming in super hot with the slut shaming. It's mm -hmm. and it's super awkward because apparently Austin is still in the house that weekend. Mm -hmm. I honestly barely even noticed that when Austin left. Like, I don't think they really even followed that. But Sierra is just super mad at herself. She's also really, really mad at Austin. But again, the more carefree and the more uh, I guess, blissful Lindsay comes off the more Sierra gets upset. Mm -hmm. Sierra gets more and more worked up at the house that weekend as she notices that everybody else around her is either moving on or dealing with other things. I think mm -hmm. that she wishes that people cared about what she was going through, but the person that she wishes cared the most was Austin. And if she's not getting it from Austin, she's more embarrassed and upset that like, it's now become such a thing that everybody knows and everybody knows that he doesn't care and she looks really stupid. But the easiest yeah. thing to do is to take it out on Lindsay. 
She is so upset, but she doesn't seem to know why. And she's not able to verbalize why. Yeah. She keeps saying it's because Lindsay keeps ignoring me. Lindsay knows what she's doing. Lindsay is kissing him. Lindsay is asking him to sleep in the... But Austin is the one who's agreeing to all of that. Yeah. Austin is the one, you know, stringing you along. It's Austin who's doing all of this. How do you not notice that? And why? Do, and she says, I understand it's single Lindsay and she's going to do whatever the fuck she wants, but she's doing this deliberately to mess with me. And I'm like, no, she is, you are getting messed up all by yourself. You are having a private experience and you are blaming Lindsay for it. It's insane. So... Yeah. Uh, we also talk about, so at this point in the house, Kyle and Amanda go and have a little discussion about a prenup. Kyle is so good to her that day. He has been so good to her all weekend. In the night, he tells everybody to shut up so she could get her good night's sleep. And he's been like in a very nice mood. He hasn't gotten too drunk or anything, all because he wants her to agree to a prenup without any question. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> he's walking on eggshells with her. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. He's like been on his best behavior because he's like, I got to get this bitch to sign these documents. (laughs) Oh my God. You're so right. Amanda, Uh, much like her sister, her Jersey sister, Teresa, does not believe in mm -hmm. prenups. Does not like it. I do understand Amanda's point though of like, we've been engaged for three years. Why are you bringing up this prenup? Like, Two, six weeks before our for wedding. For three years, she he was bringing up other issues in in the in the <laughs> relationship. Okay, it's not like he hasn't brought up prenup. Prenup is the very last thing he can bring up. He had so many other issues. They had That's so true. many other issues. They were fighting about other stuff throughout. So there was not any period where, I guess, he could have brought it up without bringing up other you know demons waking up other demons so yeah they are not I mean, I so guess... not meant to be together but they're they going a disaster. through it but and my point is that of all the people she should be the one demanding one because he has more assets and i guess because oh i think maybe because she doesn't want to i guess because he has more assets and she can yeah more. hello you just yeah talked yeah to, that's you true you just talked through the logic of that no but I'm, i was thinking about more liabilities that he has more liabilities because he has a business and his debt could come to her oh i don't even because think he doesn't be have around. cash he has a lot of debt in his company so he should she should be asking for a a prenup so to make sure that she's protected from any debt and any legal actions so if kyle was a smart man that's how he would present it Mm -hmm. but kyle's not that smart of a man no by the way it turns out this year was last year was kyle's 39th birthday i thought kyle turned 40 like four seasons ago (laughs) uh he behaves like a grown-up, still 29-year-old, 40-year-old. Yeah, like so. Kyle is the oldest. Like his, it, Then it turns out he's only like a couple years older than me. But I literally mm. thought he was in his 40s this whole yeah. time. No. Then they all go back to the city. Maya goes on a date with a boy named Oliver, who Daniel set him up with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fine, but I just want to talk about the conversation they have about food because I feel like that's like exactly our Patreon content. Yeah, it's like the different tiers of our Patreon. <laughs> but is. also, I thought it was a very nice first date mm-hmm. conversation. I thought mm-hmm. they were navigating it pretty well. Honestly, until, those un- are the un- questions- until she shamed him for being in Jersey, it was fine. I know. I was like, <laughs> how dare you? But um, also, I feel like those are the questions I would have to ask somebody if I'm trying to see if they're my soulmate. Is like, mm-hmm. what kind? What kind of fries are your favorite fries, Arthi? Right now, I'm like loving the truffle fries. Okay, but very basic of you, very bravo of you, very bravo of me. But I don't know any fry, fry potatoes. I'm not. I don't discriminate. I'm okay with it. I'm not saying you're discriminating. You have to pick your favorite. I can tell you, I love Arby's fries. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So I'm like saying that I can pick a brand if you want. Yeah. It's mostly brand. It's not the shape or what goes on it. That's fine. Uh, And. I do like Old Bay, anything with Old Bay on it. I'm yeah. Maryland, so I do yeah. like that. So, yeah. yeah, I'll give in, give in to that. That's what Maryland Potomac should hold, like Old Bay in their hand. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need champagne glasses. They need to just 
hold Old Bay. Yeah. <laughs> and they should wear crab bibs. Like yeah. on their- <laughs> crab bibs, Old Bay, and, you know, cherry blossoms. But no, they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do like it, Arby's. I do love Arby's. I love the, all the munchies that I can get. So Arby's is all about the meats, and I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> so I buy nothing but all the jalapeno poppers, the Ooh. the the mozzarella sticks, the curly fries. Curly fries. That's curly. Like. See, there you go. There you go. You yeah. figured it out. Curly Arby's fries curly fries is what is my favorite. Yeah. Are they? Do they have like any masala on it? Yeah, they have mm. obey, and they have like they are coated. Okay. Would you have mayo with your fries? No. What? No. I don't like mayo with fries. Oh my god. I'm a I'm a purist ketchup. Yeah. So the best thing is obviously when you mix the mayo and the ketchup. Mm, no. Oh my god. No. I make a special oh fry god. sauce. It's mayo, uh-huh. ketchup, a little bit of smoked paprika, uh-huh. and cayenne pepper. I can do mustard, but not mayo. What? Is it cuz it's white? <laughs> When he said, I have a problem with white foods, I was like, is he making like, a, you know, he's making a race joke. Like, it's like, I don't eat anything white. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, you oh, like no, white really bread. Down the list. He truly <laughs> doesn't like so anything white. I was like, what do you mean? Like, like non-spicy food? Yeah. Like white food? I was like, non-spicy food? What are you talking about? You know, white condiments, like ranch, yeah. which also I agree, I hate ranch. Uh, sour cream, but like, Sa- who does, can I love sour, sour cream? It's yeah. so good. Okay, I, in my opinion, waffle fries are the best. But I'm from New Jersey, so disco fries for me. Which in Jersey, if you go to a diner, it's cheese fries but with gravy on top. Gravy mm. being like, yeah, yeah. Waffle like, fries are good too. Potatoes. Waffle fries, I could do waffle fries too. You know what else is really good? Um, like masala fries. Checkers. Checkers mm. has amazing spicy fries. Mm. I had fries in India. Mm-hmm. And they were topped with Indian chaat masala. And yeah. it was so good. So good. Like, I would love to have, like, bapri chaat, but instead of with bapri, it would be with french fries. Huh. I can make that. Like, crispy, fresh french fries, but On with, like, the chole like... and the yogurt and the chutneys and the <gasps> indi and all that stuff. That could be done. Yeah. Yeah. My mouth is watering. I know. Ramadan starts Saturday. Mm. <laughs> I just sent you a tech. Did I sent you a link to a dessert dish for Ramadan? What was it? I didn't watch it yet. Ah, uh, you'll see. I don't know what it's called. It's a Middle Eastern dish. You probably know the name better, but it was really good to watch. It had pistachios oh, on top. Oh, yeah, God, I can't wait. I can't wait yeah. to watch it, especially when I'm fasting. Yeah. Um, all right. Anyway, Sierra, Paige, and Amanda meet up, and again, Sierra is upset. She's mostly upset that Austin's in the city. He hasn't called her. He hasn't met up with her. And Amanda does try to say, I don't blame Lindsay at all. Okay. This yeah. is all Austin. But that yeah. little fucking Paige. <laughs> I have a theory. Yeah. Paige has been spending the week with Craig. Mm-hmm. Craig hates Austin right now because Austin is the reason why Paige got word that Craig was stupping Kristen mm. Cavallari. Mm. So, Craig, we know Craig. Craig is the pettiest. The pettiest person on Bravo. There yeah. has not been a pettier man on Bravo than oh. Craig Conover. Shep is petty too. Austin is petty. Yeah, I think like, they're all on the same They level. are. No, but like yeah. the, the Southern Charm guys are especially yeah, petty. Pettiest. I mean, they're like yeah. Joe Gorga petty. Yes. Okay, that's what yes. they are. Yeah. And I feel like it, w- it could have been super easy. <clears throat> it could have been super easy for Craig to convince Paige, you know what? It's Austin's fault. But – it wasn't just that Craig was mad at Austin for telling Lindsay. It was the fact that Lindsay then went and told Paige mm. that Craig was hooking up with Kristen Cavallari. And this was Craig's way of getting back at Lindsay. He mm. worked up Paige and Paige then goes and works up Sierra. At Ooh. this lunch, she's like, no, it's like Lindsay. She doesn't care. And it's so funny because they keep disclaimering it with like, no, Austin sucks. Austin is really bad. And it's like an evolution. It starts with Austin sucks, but like Lindsay also is at fault. It starts low. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, it's a crescendo. It's like Paige is like, Austin is the worst fuck in person in the world and Lindsay is pretty close like yeah. okay what happened to like this is mostly Austin's fault so yeah, I do yeah, feel yeah. like Craig worked Paige up to really try to mm. get Lindsay 
like mm. in trouble basically or like really like embarrass Lindsay or get Sierra to scream at Lindsay. I feel like that's what happened. But u- ultimately they're mad at Lindsay for not having any regard for Sierra's feelings, which I yeah. say Lindsay doesn't owe Sierra that at all. No, they're not really friends. Not at all. They're not friends. They're not, they may be housemates, but she's never been friends with uh, Sierra. There's never been anything. And Sierra didn't care for her in Vermont, so why wouldn't Lindsay care for her here? She's doing yeah. exactly what Sierra did. And Sierra is upset, and she keeps saying, oh, she's just getting getting back at me for Vermont. So if she's getting back at you for Vermont, take it. Because yeah. you did the same thing to her. So why are you upset with it now? Why does um, why does Lindsay owe you anything? And I think with, uh, with Paige, it was more of, I felt the beginnings of Paige and Craig trying to become the it couple on Bravo with Paige planning to go down to uh, to Charleston mm-hmm. for the summer, basically indicating she's going to be in Southern Charm and she's going to be, you know, being part of that. So I felt like they were like orchestrating that. Mm. And to be that, then they have to be, they have to cause, have a both here and in Southern Charm. So they had to do something of that sort. But yeah. yeah. It was just too, uh, uh, I don't care. I don't care about them. I don't really truly care about Craig and Paige, but Paige is, Paige is also upset that Lindsay can read Paige. She knows where Paige is coming from. Mm -hmm. And Paige knows that, and that bothers Paige. Like Paige cannot be, Lindsay sees beyond the sweet girl persona that Paige puts out. Lindsay sees beyond that and doesn't yeah. quite care. She just, she just doesn't care. And Paige wants Lindsay to care and she doesn't care about her. So I think, I think actually Lindsay does care about Paige. I don't think that <laughs> Lindsay doesn't care about Paige. I think Paige and Lindsay could be good friends. Cause I remember Lindsay and Hannah were good friends mm-hmm. like on the seasons that Hannah was around. Yeah. So it's not that Lindsay and Paige don't get along or they don't like each other. I truly believe it is because when the season started, Paige was crying by what, episode two? Mm-hmm. Because Lindsay went and told her that Craig was fucking Kristen Cavallari. Right. And that pissed Craig off. And that made mm-hmm. Craig scream at her and made Craig look like a bad person. And she knew how the viewers were going to look at Craig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She knew that that made her I look think stupid. Maybe your, she, your theory she knows. is the best. Yeah. And this is her way of getting back at Lindsay. I, mm-hmm. I really believe it. And, mm-hmm. and and we saw it later, right? So anyway, they go to the Hamptons. Craig is coming with them. Andrea is having a Ferragusto party. Mm-hmm. Ferragusto. Mm-hmm. And remember earlier we were talking about we should go on a vacation? Yeah. And I was like, maybe we should go to Italy when everybody's yeah. on holiday. Yeah. When all Fair the Italians Augusto. are just, yeah. That's what we it. should go for. Yeah, we both love pasta. We both love cheese. And we can talk about love. Whatever. Or not. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Invite us. Invite us to your table in Italy. We'll yeah. There. Yeah. My four pillars of love, if I go to Italy, is uh-huh. cheese, pasta, <laughs> bread. Mm-hmm. Garlic. Gelato. Gelato. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Those are my four pillars of amour, if you will. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. That sounds like a perfect vacation. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrea is making them all a dinner. And I just want to point out the fact that this man has his blouse completely unbuttoned down to one button. He's got his titties out and he's like mm-hmm. making sauce. <laughs> Which is how I think all Italian men cook with some of their hair. <laughs> With the potential of some of their chest hair falling in there. This is how this is how Nono Nono cooked. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's how Nona cooked. Yeah. I know. Exactly. But yeah. I was impressed that he was making two different sauces. Did you notice that there were yes. two different sauces? I was like, how much pasta are you making? And why do you have two sauces going on? Like what are you working on? I think one was a vegetarian sauce. Ooh, one yeah. was vegan, huh? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Alex a man didn't come of to... many many talents. Yeah, I wonder if Alex didn't come to this weekend because there were too many carbs being served. There was like bread. There was pasta. <laughs> it was like pasta. No, I'm not coming. <laughs> By the way, so they cut it out of this episode, but there was a clip going around 
earlier of like you know when they show it release a preview or whatever the mm-hmm. insider they showed a clip of that clip of everybody after Lindsay's birthday the next morning cleaning up outside mm-hmm. i saw the back of alex's fucking head and i was like you did <laughs> I oh saw- i didn't notice that but also after all the drama austin ends up not sleeping in Lindsay's bed because of her other um italian dude yeah. But or Argentinian dude. But then um he sleeps in um Andrea's bed and Andrea says he sleep slept in Alex's bed. Yeah. Because it's big. So that was Alex there? Did they did they share the bed? And what <laughs> happened there? So if, if they had footage of Andrea getting into bed, why wasn't Alex in that footage? <laughs> I didn't, I'm like Where you couldn't even show is. him <laughs> getting into the bed. In Alex's room, somebody, like, put, somebody put a missing person on the back of a pound of ground turkey because we got to look for Alex. <laughs> That's only if you want Alex to find that poster. <laughs> Everybody else was looking at the milk carton. <laughs> Alex is the only one looking at ground turkey. <laughs> and he's like, there I am. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, while they're all <laughs> cooking, Maya, Lindsay, and Danielle talk, and immediately made Maya's basically trying to like mend the situation, yeah. but she tells Lindsay, "Look, Sierra's really upset still about mm. what happened last weekend, and I do think that like you guys should talk, whatever." Immediately, the thing that is brought up is the age, which is like what we pointed out. Yeah. They're ten year. There's a ten year age difference, yeah. and a ten year age difference when you're in your thirties and your forties is very different than your twenties and your thirties. Okay, yeah. as evidenced yeah. here on this podcast. Okay, uh, like that's immediately the first thing she says is she's like Sierra's twenty five and I'm thirty five, and we just have like very different outlooks. I did think it was funny that she was like, "I wish Sierra just talked to me." Talk to me. <laughs> like. Lindsay, that now you're gaslighting her. She actually literally followed you, tried to chase you down, and you refused to talk to her. I do think Lindsay's point was, though, that, like, I wish that Sierra had talked to me earlier that weekend. Also, why are we all acting like Austin came? She said, oh, he's probably going to sleep in my bed. Then Lindsay and Austin went to go have drinks. Then they came back and met up with everybody else. Austin tells Sierra she looks like Celine Dion for some reason. And then they make out at that like outdoor club or bar or whatever. So Lindsay knew that they had hooked up and it was like not a big deal to Lindsay. And then Mm -hmm. the next day she just like made out with Austin later too. And Sierra's like, nobody saw him and you like hid your victim or whatever she says later on. It's like she was literally making out with him in the middle of the party. And to some degree, Sierra's like, I don't, I'm jumping again. I'm so annoyed with Sierra. But anyway, they immediately bring that up. And Lindsay's like, I love that Danielle is like, look, Lindsay is just a casual makeout person. (laughs) I want a friend like Danielle. Like, Lindsay can do no wrong. Even when she does wrong and Danielle knows it's wrong, Danielle has a way of justifying it. She's like, she's, that's just who she is. She's a casual maker outer. (laughs) This is a casual maker outer. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, but Danielle, no. I know. And then this is Maya's biggest crime, in my opinion, since the cookies that she hasn't delivered to many people. But her biggest crime was that she went quickly and told this information to Paige and Sierra in a very different way than was communicated to her. And then yeah. Sierra gets active. Sierra doesn't get, she gets upset. She, Sierra gets hurt. She doesn't get activated. She's still no, in the heart hurt phase. And it's actually Paige who activates Sierra. She's like, you need yeah. to go and do something about it. Yes. She mm-hmm. really gets her all worked up. Mm-hmm. Like she really uses that moment to get Sierra as worked up as possible. And Again, Sierra is crying about Austin and instead of, like you said, like dealing with the emotion of what it is that is so upsetting to her about Austin, it's easier for her to take it out on Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all get to dinner and they're all talking about their meaning of love. Lindsay shares her pillars of love, one of which is love. (laughs) My, it's, I love that Lindsay. No, but let's talk she's... about Andrea crying. He oh, starts yeah, off. Yeah. He so, starts first. 
no, no. Lindsay, well, Andrea mm-hmm. shares his feelings about love, and he gets super duper emotional, and then he just continues to cry the rest of the night. <laughs> me, I was like looking at him, like you and me are so similar, Andrea. <laughs> I eat a lot of pasta and can't stop crying either. <laughs> And That's you also, me. you also I cannot... make your pasta without a shirt on. I also make my pasta without my shirt on. But also, I'm like, I understood, I understand that kind of crying because when you start crying and you cannot stop and you don't know exactly what, he was like complete, you know, PMSing. He was like, it was like a PMS cry because it was the kind of cry where you cry, but you don't quite know where, why you're crying. And your <laughs> friends are trying to ascribe it to something. They're like, is this why you're crying? Is this why you're crying? And you're like, all of it. It's all of it. I it's know. Lexi. It's my family. It's Ferragosta. It's the pasta. <laughs> it's it's the pasta. It's the guanciale. It's all of it. It's all it's, of it. It's all of it. It's Alex not being here. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. It's so all much. of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think he put in so much thought that he was thinking back. It, I truly think it was homesickness at that point. It wasn't yeah. anything. It was not the... Uh, not the other girl that he let go or any of that, which is kind of like stupid. Like you pick Paige and that's why you let her go. And now you're yeah. crying over her. No, that doesn't make sense. But I think it is homesickness because I, I understand the feeling of putting up the flags and talking about your culture and all of that and gets you into a very emotional space, especially if you haven't been back home for a long time. Yeah. Oh, sweet Andrea. Luke yeah. obviously goes to console him. Oh, sweet Luke. Luke. The girls are like, yap, yap, yap. The hens are fighting. And Luke is like, yeah. is anyone going to check up on Andrea? It was, it was, it was actually, um, um, Amanda got up and went over to him. And then Luke, then when he gets up, Luke walks him out and stands with him outside. Yeah. While it's... he's crying under a pillar. I know. <laughs> Poor Andre. <laughs> This is when you should have had Alex as a seat filler, but yeah, <laughs> getting it back to the Oscars. <laughs> I love about Lindsay is when Lindsay's talking about anything. Sometimes she's already sounds drunk. Like when she's sharing her pillars of love, she says it in a way where I'm like, "Were you drunk already?" She's like. She's My definitely on. She's already downed a couple of gummies for sure because she has that silly <laughs> smile on her face. Got that grin on her face. She has a grin on her face, and she's just like she's glassy eyed, and she's just talking. <laughs> she and Kyle have already put some gummies in, <laughs> and they didn't share any with Daniel. I wish they had. Yeah, I know. Daniel needed it. I know. So anyway, Sierra, it's Sierra's turn to talk about love, but she ends up using her mic time to just really come in hot against Lindsay. And here's the thing. Sierra could have said all those things, but if she hadn't dropped an F-bomb, I would have yeah. been like, oh, she's being pretty fucking cool about it. Yeah. But instead, you could tell she was like near tears. She was about to cry. I was like, oh, you look like such an idiot. And again, I just want to say one thing. That's age. That's age. One, that's age. And two... I don't think anything Sierra was saying about Lindsay was necessarily off the mark of who yes. Lindsay is. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. everybody does tolerate a lot of the shit that she yeah. does and calls it whatever. It's just Lindsay, right? I do think that there is yes. that. Yes. Yeah, including but- us. <laughs> Including us. But to say something to, about Lindsay, like you isolate your victims in order to be affectionate with them, I think that's yeah. where Danielle was like, you're crossing the line. Because that right. makes Lindsay sound like she's a predator. She's not. Yes. She yeah. didn't. She, poor little Austin wasn't yeah. a victim. Okay. Yeah. Poor little Austin didn't no, have no, to no. Get- she was talking. She was talking about Sierra. Sierra being isolated because she was taking Austin away and isolating Sierra. She felt isolated. No, she, she said you like isolate victim. your victims in order to be affectionate with them. You had to go in a corner and kiss him and nobody had oh, to know oh, oh, about Oh, that it. way. I was thinking the other way where she, Sierra felt isolated because 
and victimized by Lindsay. I think that that those two things are true, but maybe mm. that is why she chose to use those words. She may have been feeling some way about herself, but instead used it to to talk about Austin mm. completely incorrectly. Like as she went along, as she, she had her monologue prepared, yeah. and once she got to the end of it, she didn't know how to end it, so she kept going. <laughs> and it started becoming more and more incoherent. <laughs> Been and there, she, sister. her voice started shaking. She couldn't get her words through. She didn't make yeah. any sense. She started stringing through a lot of different things. She even accused at one point was up when she got up. She was like, it's not just about this. You have ignored me and made me feel. Um, you two have me disregarded feel, me. Disregarded me at other times as well. And w- maybe there are times when. Sierra has felt like othered in the group and it Lindsay has led that on without it, maybe with re, what, maybe realizing it maybe not realizing maybe unconsciously maybe consciously has done something that has othered Sierra but we have as an audience haven't seen that mm-hmm. and Sierra hasn't been able to talk about it she hasn't mentioned what exactly has Lindsay done to make her feel that way yeah. so she was accusing Lindsay of something that could be serious, but we don't know what that is. And I don't think Sierra ever mentioned it before. So we don't know what Sierra was talking about. And that's what Danielle says, what are you talking about? She's like, both of you, two of you. She's like, me? What have I done? That's yeah. when Danielle gets all worked up. If we think about like Sierra and her feelings about Lindsay and Danielle, I do think that Lindsay and Danielle have a click quality to them. Mm -hmm. But I also think, again, it's an age thing. They're in their 30s and they have a completely different outlook on life. If you want to talk about isolating or making somebody feel left out, if you think about Vermont, Lindsay – Okay, let's not even talk about Vermont. In in, in Vermont, she was the oldest of the girls. Yeah, she was the yeah. oldest of the girls, and she wasn't. She didn't really have a crew, so then she started. She did. She was Jason. leaning on Austin for that. Yeah, and then he like left her, and yeah. instead was with Sierra. So Sierra has, when she started on the show, she immediately became friends with Paige and Hannah. So it be, immediately became the messy younger kids and yeah. the older responsible parents of the house, yeah. right? So, like, you had your crew, Sierra, and Lindsay has her crew. That's fine. But I do think that Sierra has realized that Paige and Hannah belong to a certain part of the Bravo fandom that is actually very problematic, right? Uh, We know that the Giggly Squad has had, like, very – the Giggly Squad Facebook group is, like, super-duper racist and all that stuff. So I feel like maybe at some point Sierra realized that the people that she's on the show with, who she's aligned with on the show, maybe she doesn't actually really want to be friends with them. Maybe she wishes that she was actually friends with Lindsay and Danielle and the older, more like responsible, like woke crowd. I think that if that is the case, if she really just wants to be friends with them and instead all they've ever done is really tried to like look down on her and kind of treated her and bundled her in like the younger crowd and not really shown her the respect that she's been looking for. That is what is triggering her in all this. It doesn't actually matter that it's about Austin. Mm -hmm. All, all Sierra wants is for Lindsay to care about her feelings and why she wants Lindsay to care about her feelings is something that Sierra needs to explore more in the same way she needs to explore more why she wants Austin to like her. Mm -hmm. It's that stuff. And if she doesn't do that type of thinking and figure that out, it's always going to come out in this like nonsensical way. Right. And the worst part about it is that she doesn't have a good enough friend in the house in Paige to say, This is, you might be right about Lindsay, but Austin being the catalyst for all this coming out is going to make you look really stupid. Mm. Like, that's what you need in a good friend in your 30s that you get in your good friends in your 30s. You don't get that a lot of times in your 20s unless that's a really, really good friend. And Paige is not a good friend to Sierra. She and Craig are sitting at that table and they are absolutely gleeful. Mm -hmm. They are giggling. They are smiling. They are flipping their hair. Like Craig is like, oh, I'm mad at Austin. By the way, I think Austin is wrong. I'm mad at him. But at the same time, he and and Paige are looking at each other and they're smiling. Mm -hmm. Like they're smirking. And it's that's diabolical. Yeah. No, I agree with most of what you just said. Uh, I do think that – I do not think that um, Sierra is – 
aware enough to understand that the giggly squad uh, squad is tr- troublesome and wants to be away from that. Mm. I think wh- where she is coming from is where you said, where she's looking for respect from the rest of the crew. And I think she sees that Amanda gets that respect from Danielle and um, Danielle and Lindsay because she's with Kyle. Yeah. And then now Paige is getting that respect because she's with Craig or she's with you know, whoever, but she's always getting that respect from Danny, from um, Lindsay. Lindsay actually engages with her. Lindsay absolutely does not engage at all with Sierra. So yeah. if you were thinking about it, like if there's a person that you, you may not, we as audience may not notice it as much as Sierra notices it, is that Lindsay never speaks to her never engages with her, never shows any interest in her life, doesn't have a conversation with her, but she's a co-worker and she's in the same house. How do you live under the same roof, but you don't show any interest in me? That's where I think Sierra notices that she feels othered, but she doesn't quite know how to say it. She thought that going after Austin, who was a friend of Lindsay's, would somehow solidify her position yeah. In the in Lindsay's circle. So Lindsay would actually give her the time of the day. But Lindsay just basically ignored her relationship with Austin completely. And yeah. that's what feels disrespectful to Sierra. But Sierra is too young to verbalize all of that and say it in in a more sensible way, in a more mature way to Lindsay or to the audience. So at least she could win the audience over, right? Yeah. She's not able to um verbalize it and the only person she says at one point that she's so impressed with the minimum that Paige did to protect her to defend her and she says I would do anything for her that's the kind of person Sierra is she's like an all-in kind of person Mm -hmm. and she doesn't realize that Paige is not all in if something happens Paige will throw her under the bus and she doesn't have that kind of support or real friendship with Amanda she doesn't have any real friendships there other than Paige that yeah. she thinks she has a real friendship with. So I can see how she feels isolated. She feels like she's on the screen, but she's more like the Alex because yeah. she's just used as a prop. Yeah. And she's not able to verbalize it. She's not able to convey that to the rest of the housemates. That, But on, she, she also has to remember she came in as uh, Luke's friend. Yeah. And she's barely talking to Luke. She's not having an interaction with Luke. She didn't talk to Luke at all last season. She got really mad at him for texting her. So I think you're absolutely right. I think it's a mix of all those things. And I think all of the anger that she's, she's, she's coming at them with, it's really just coming from a place of feeling extremely hurt and feeling extremely dismissed by somebody who she knows is kind of an alpha in the group. Right. And who is somebody who she doesn't believe deserves to be the alpha, whether or not. And that's maybe her opinion. That's fine. But like Lindsay is basically the girl equivalent of Kyle. It's Kyle and Lindsay's show. Kyle, Lindsay and Carl were the first people on the show and they remained on it. It's their television show. So the fact that like the, you know, the house hen or whatever doesn't really pay attention to her drives her crazy. Yeah. And I don't think that she, you're right. I don't think she has the self-awareness or like the, she's not done the work on her mental health or like her own, her own triggers. Right. And for her own, yeah, of her own strengths and weaknesses. Of right? her own strengths and weaknesses. And it's sad because it's very clear that Sierra doesn't think very highly of herself. Mm-hmm. And she def- should def- think more highly definite of herself. low esteem as, yeah. uh, issues here because the very fact that she thinks that Austin even likes her when he repeatedly says all of the red flag sentences to her. Like he's openly talking about there being no attractive girls in the party. He keeps um, saying all of the things that I would find offensive in a partner. And he dismisses her all the time. And he, she still keeps following him around like a lost puppy. Yeah. That's sad. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. Mm-hmm. Well, but it was a great episode. I mm-hmm. do think that we didn't need it to be continued. I noticed that they were giving us a whole bunch of random filler footage in the middle. And I was like, yeah. you know, you didn't need to do that. You could have wrapped yeah. up the fight in one, this one episode. We would have I been know. here next week. Yeah. We are going to be there. We're I hate that to be continued for so no pointless. reason. And you know that it will be resolved in the next two seconds of the next episode. With the first five seconds, it will be resolved. Absolutely. 
Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. There's not much happening there. No. Yeah. But that's it for this episode. We did watch Candy and the Gang, but we'll yeah. talk about it another time because we ran out of time this time. Lucky you, because I don't think you've watched all four episodes, have you? I watched three of four episodes, uh-huh, and let me that's tell good. you, uh-huh. I love the show. Me too. I love the show. The fourth episode, the show. like, is a doozy. I loved it. I love everyone on the show except for Philip. Philip can go fuck himself. <laughs> My absolute favorite person on the show is Torin. Oh and Brian. yes, Torin and Brian. Yeah, Torin and Brian and their interactions are awesome. The best. Yeah. The be- the and you know what? Patrick, the CEO of the parking lot. Yes. I told you. He's the interesting character. He's the best. He's so sweet. I he's love that. He's sweet. Them. He's misguided. <laughs> he's so innocent, but he thinks so highly of himself. Does Pep talk to himself to go manage a parking lot? It's <laughs> the best. He's and a he vegan. He can build an empire of the parking lot. I'm so happy for him. He's going to have a whole bunch of parking decks and he's going to own all of them all around like Atlanta. Candy finds people's strengths and is like, you know what? I'm You can get the world with that. And I love that. Yeah. So I can't yeah. wait to talk more about that show yeah. another time. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift. So remember the thank you note. Lily. Some people say I'm too much, but she's just starting. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can take you down. Amanda Agosti. Some Amandas are tech spots, but this Amanda is as real as it gets. Ade Ade Dokun. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but actually I'm just smoking it. Paula Bretrude. If you think I'm a bitch, you're probably right, and you probably deserved it. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back, and also my unsolicited opinion. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Hadil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Srinidhi Subramaniam. I have four degrees, eight syllables, and zero Fs to give. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shade. Brianna Tooney. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. And finally, Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. 